Hey guys, this is uh, Handcrafted by Jason Cooper, uh, coming to you with another project. Um, before I get on to that though, be sure you hit subscribe and uh, stop by my website at woodwork.cooperjason.com and you can sign up for my email newsletter, get some free plans, all that kind of stuff. Well, this uh, project was a fairly simple one made with some uh, basic construction lumber. And I'm actually sitting in front of it, you can barely tell here, but it's a skinny sofa table. So we have this couch down here in our basement where we usually watch TV. We need a place to put um, you know, drinks, uh, to set the phones and charge them and all that kind of stuff. And so I built a skinny table to sit behind the couch. And you can see it there, a little charging station in the middle, and it goes on to the other end of the couch. It's a fairly simple project, something you could easily tackle on your own, and it just uses some basic construction lumber. Here's a little bit different view of it. You can see it here behind the couch, made with a two by eight. So it's only about seven and a half inches wide, but that's plenty to do what we need to do without taking up too much room in, in the room itself. Again, there's a plug in there for phones and chargers, lamps, whatever you need. And then I decided to go ahead and dovetail the ends um, to make the legs. Again, all made out of a two by eight, very simple project. Certainly wouldn't have to do the dovetails. Um, you could just screw them on and call it good. Um, but either way, it's a very simple project, easy one to do and very handy. Now the first step is obviously to get your lumber. Uh, again, I'm using two by eights readily available at the big box stores or your local lumber yard. Got a long piece for the, the top and then I got uh, about a six foot piece that I cut down to, I think they were about 34 inches, I don't remember exactly the height of the legs. Um, and then I ran them all through my planer. Now the, the top piece, the long piece, um, usually two by eights and wider stock like that has a bit of a cup to it. So I, I, I faced the cup up and then planed it, uh, just the top side to flatten it down a little bit and then ran the legs through just so they're all the same thickness, which will make it come together a little easier in the end. All right, I'm set up to cut the uh, pin side of my you know, big dovetail for this uh, skinny table. And one thing it's a good thing to do is get in the habit of marking the waist area of any cut, even if you're just doing uh, baseboards and you need to mark something Put a little X on the side that's the waist side. Um, to cut a dovetail with a handsaw, um, I'm not using anything fancy. It's an expensive uh, pole saw with fine cut blade. Um, probably not really made for this, but it's doing the job. And you're just using the lines that you drew based off your uh, tailpiece. And you're gonna you're gonna you know always always kind of cheat to the waist side of the cut. And you can't see both sides at the same time. I got a line connecting down over here. But you're going to start by cutting along this line at a fairly steep angle. And that'll give you a fairly straight uh, uh, groove going uh, on your cut so that when you do make it across, you should be in line with that side. But you got to double check uh, once you get over there, once you get down far enough to do that. It takes a little bit of uh, time, a little bit of patience, especially starting the cut out. Uh, to get it in the groove and get it where you want to go. But again, cheat it onto the waist side a little bit. You can always clean it up with a chisel and uh, just take it slowly and you should be good.
So the first cut, um, learning something new like this always is going to take longer. But once you've done one, the other cuts will come more quickly and you'll make some progress. Um, and, and again, just in this case, cheat your cut to the waist side of the line because you can always clean it up with a chisel. And one thing I, I don't think I made cl clear was that I used, I actually cut the tail side of the board of the joint, which is the top piece in this case, first. And you'll see that here in a minute. And then I use that to lay out uh, the pin side, which I am cutting here. That way I know that I've used the actual um, tail measurements of the actual piece rather than just kind of a guess or measuring or whatever to mark these cuts. And that's, that's, that's what you gotta do to make this fit right. So here it is, I'm actually laying out the, the first cut, the, the tail cuts um, on the top piece for this skinny table. And there's some proportions that you can use and some uh, certain angles you can use and just encourage you to look those up. You can buy uh, marking gauges uh, for dovetails online pretty easily. Amazon has several um, different angles you can use. Um, there's lots of people with videos about how to kind of choose that setup, but just pick something and go with it. Mine, I wanted fairly even spacing on the dovetails. And again, this is my first try, so I wasn't too worried about if I messed it up. It's just a skinny table. It's going to be mostly hidden behind my couch to begin with, and it's inexpensive lumber. So it seemed to make sense to just kind of experiment a little bit. So uh, this one was a lot harder to cut, though, because I couldn't set it up vertically to cut because it's so long. So I had to try to get on top of the piece, which worked, but it was kind of a pain. Um, so if you're doing something really long like this and you can figure out a better way to do it, I'd love to know how. Um, but sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do. It's a lot of chisel work, a lot of hand work, just to clean these up. Get them fairly straight, flush, and even, you can see I've got a decent straight line across there. Fairly pleased. Not bad for a few minutes and a chisel and a hammer. And now back to the uh, leg pieces, which are the pin side of the dovetail. Um, I found it real easy to just drill a hole through and then take my uh, scroll saw to cut out the waste um, on these pieces that seem to go quickly and then of course use a chisel uh, to clean it up now This is this is pine. This is construction lumber lumber It's soft and you're gonna need to keep your chisel sharp. You'll get some tear out, but that's okay uh, Just make sure you uh, take your time and and do the best you can sharpen your chisels every once in a while and it'll turn out all right Okay, so in the middle of my skinny table I am putting this Recessed plug with a couple of USBs for charging because um, we're going to be covering up an outlet or two. And that way when we're sitting there, we can uh, plug our phones in or put a lamp or whatever we need to do on this uh, skinny table. I don't have a lot of leeway on the lip of this. I wish I looked a little more closely when I bought this. That's only about a sixteenth of an inch on each side. The ends I've got plenty. So I've marked out what I need to take out here. And I'm going to rough it out with my router first, see how that goes, and clean it up with a chisel, uh, working my way through. Um, so hopefully, everything can come out okay, although I'm sure, as with a lot of projects, it will probably adjust as I go on. So, time to gear up. You can see here I've got a clear uh, adapter plate for my router, and then I've got a, a collar and a bit, and you know I can get in there and do what I need to do. The clear plate makes it a lot easier to see the work, and then I just hogged out the rest with the uh, um, coping saw. Made pretty quick work, cleaned it up with a chisel, and then we were re ready for the next step. All right, there it is. And uh, this is the top side of the table. And the thing is, when you're doing something like this, it goes through and the underside is never going to be seen. What matters is how clean you get the top side. And again, that, my little uh, plug-in has a little bit of a lip to it, especially on the ends. But on the sides, not a lot. So I had to be kind of careful there. I didn't go too far and make it too loose and have a, have a gap to try to fill some other way. Um, but I got it uh, so it fits nice and snug. And uh, it's going to be great.
Well, I was pleased with my dry fit, so it's time to glue this, uh, glue this up. And you just want to make sure you get glue on all the mating surfaces. Um, and, you know, get a little excess in there. It's okay. It'll somehow squeeze out. You can clean that up afterwards. And then I used a square to clamp this uh, joint just to make sure it didn't move on me much while I did the other end. And I'll do the same thing there. Dry fit it, put glue on all the surfaces, put it together, and then clamp a square on it while it dries. All right, so I've got it uh, glued up. Set it inside overnight where it's not quite so cold. Let it dry. Not the prettiest joint I've ever seen, but first time hand cutting a dovetail. Um, other end looks about the same. So next step is gonna be sand the dickens out of this thing. Get this smoothed out a little bit better. Maybe a little planing involved too, we'll see. Um, and I won't bother recording the sanding process. That's pretty straightforward. Most people know how to sand. Um, but I just need to even this all up, probably fill in a few holes and get this thing all smoothed out. I'm gonna round over these ends just a little bit so it looks nice. So here's a couple shots after sanding. You can see how that cleaned up uh, pretty well. There's a few small gaps. I'll put a little filler in there and hopefully can cover those up a little bit, but on to staining. Now when I'm staining pine, because it's such a soft wood and you can get a very blotchy appearance, I often try to use a gel stain because it's a little thicker. You can control it better with a rag and uh, try to get a more even finish. And in this case, I think it turned out okay. So once it was sanded, stained, put a, coat, uh, a couple coats of polyurethane on, and then it was a matter of putting in the hardware and then this table was pretty much ready to go. Again, this is a simple little plug-in that you can get from Amazon. Um, all sorts of different shapes and sizes um, that you would want. Um, and I'll drop a link in there for the one that I got. Um, but again, you can get those, uh, put them in your tables, or your desktops or whatever, and uh, they're pretty cool. And if you have the wireless charging, you can actually get those as well. I haven't messed with one of those yet. Um, but uh, this thing is about done. So that's it for the skinny table. Um, real simple project, something you could easily do on your own if you have a few tools, and very handy in the family room. So thanks for watching. Uh, be sure to hit subscribe here on YouTube. Stop by my website at woodwork.cooperjason.com and sign up for my email list there and get some free plans and all that kind of stuff. Until next time, thanks for watching.